Okay, ready to go? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going. This is a shale right here. You can tell that because A, if I dropped acid on it, it would not fizz, and I actually had to put it in an epoxy to hold it together. Also, guys, it's got cracks and things like that in there. Well, it's, you can see that it's well laminated, but this is a shale right here. It's a mudstone that actually has facility and lamination in it, so we call that a shale. This may look like a shale, but in fact, it's a carbonate. It's a carbonate that's actually a deep water carbonate because it's laminated. The laminations in this are relatively thin. They actually have a segregation in, in the different kinds of grain size that are in here. So there's a silties part and then a mud, lime mudstone part. So each one of those actually represents really a turbinite. So that's what turbinates look like when they're actually in carbonates. You can have carbonate turbinates, yes. And there's also some ripple lamination at the very top of this as well. So you can see the ripples that are unidirectional in here. Actually, we call those asymmetrical ripples at the very top up here caused by currents. So the currents are hitting that way on there and causing the ripple lamination. Um, so planar beds in here with ripple lamination at the top. This, by the way, this is a Cambrian in age. This comes from the Ruby Mountains. This is also from the, I think that's, uh, yeah, this is from Cherry Creek. So this is another deep water carbonate uh, uh, with that being the up direction that way. Because the ripples tell you what the up direction is on that. Um, so the Cherry Creeks are in uh, Nevada as well. This is also from the Ruby Mountains right here. This is a lime, uh, it's a grainstone. It's a limestone actually. You can put acid on it with fizz. It's got a polished surface on here. If you put acid on this, I'll kill you. Yeah. Um, so it takes a while to make a polished surface like that. And so this is, uh, in fact, a grainstone. It's made out of trilobites, of all things, and a lot of cement. There's actually uh, probably 40 or 50 percent cement in this, and the rest of it is just uh, bioclastic grains that uh, are in here. So maybe some brachiopods, but a lot of uh, trilobite fragments in there as well. Um, so Cambrian, Cambrian, Cambrian. This actually, as it turns out, is an unknown name right here, but that's a breccia right here. So this breccia comes from Decaturville impact structure. It's a piece of core. I can't tell you what the up direction is. I don't know. But it has a lot of dolomite in it. It has white turk class in it as well. That's probably a dolomite class right there. But then it's also got these rusty spots on here, which were uh, weathered pyrite in here, but there's finely disseminated pyrite through the whole thing. This actually comes from the Decaturville impact structure. It's called the sulfide breccia, and the sulfide breccia was once mined for minerals, and it's no longer being used for that uh, today because, as it turns out, pyrite's worthless. <laughs> um, this, and this, and this rock right here, and also this rock right over here. are all from the middle Ordovician Kanash Shale. They're limestones that were actually deposited in the middle of the shale. As it turns out, these limestones were mostly made out of rip-up class, but they're very rich with fossils as well. So there's a lot of brachiopods in here. Here are some snails. These are the brachiopods, the darker sort of calcitic material in here. But the snails themselves are made out of aragonite, so they were actually dissolved. And so aragonite goes into solution or it goes through inversion and becomes calcite. In this case, it probably got dissolved. Some people think it was because it actually dissolved in seawater, which is unusual because seawater is actually super saturated with respect to calcite. But some people think that it was brackish water, and so brackish water would allow these things to actually dissolve. So these are snails. That is a cephalopod right here. It's a straight cephalopod. It's middle Ordovician in age. And the interesting thing about these four samples is that you can actually see some uh, rip up class that have been rounded here. So these things, these clasts in here, are pieces of material that was ripped up during a storm deposit. But there was so much material in here that was bioclastic that it just kind of drowned out everything else. And so all of this material is interesting because there probably was a storm that came and ripped off through this shelf in multiple layers. And it left behind all of this carbonate debris. And that carbonate debris then became encrusted with other organisms, especially like early crinoids would actually, or eel crinoids would actually come along and, uh, and colonize this sort of surface like this. And some of these uh, snails actually grew in place as well. They were what they call sessile snails. Some of these large flat snails like that actually grew on the sea floor. And so this is actually a piece of fossil seafloor. And then carbonates uh, geology, 
we call that a hard ground. So hard grounds can develop where you have ancient seafloor that's more or less been preserved. Shale's covered over the top of this and essentially uh, preserved it afterwards. And so these four samples all come from the Kanash Shale. And uh, by the way, the fabric on this, this is actually a interplastic, bioclastic grain stone, if you will. Um, but some of the grains are pretty fine and there's a fair amount of mud in here, so maybe I'd revise that and call it a pack stone. So there may be pack stone components in this as well, but grain stone locally in this. So in other words, it could be a whole range of different kinds of like fabrics, permanent fabrics, or thin single rock. In this case, probably pack stone and grain stone. So those are a couple. And hard ground there. This is the Gilman, uh, those are uh, lower division in age. This is actually Devonian in age, Middle Devonian from the Chevesian, uh, from the Confusion Range as well. So that came from the Confusion Range. This came from the Confusion Range, but obviously higher up in the column. The Gilman has all these weird tubular sort of features in here. And we actually were talking about this. Are they burrows or are they uh, spaghetti stromatoporoids? And I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna convince myself that these things are probably burrows. They are branching burrows, you can see here. But when I looked up close with the hand lens with this, you couldn't actually detect if they were cellular or if they had some sort of cell wall that would indicate that they're a, like a stromatoporoid. Now there's a little piece right there that may make all of this moot. Where's the hand lens at? Who's got the hand lens? I don't have the hand lens, so somebody took the hand lens. Anyway, these things probably burrows, but they may be uh, spaghetti stroma, stromatoporoids as well. I just have a hand lens. It's not my hand lens. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> Let me double check my pockets here. You can shut it off for a second. <laughs> 